In the previous video, we had an introduction to ionic equilibrium and solutions. In this one, we are going to just briefly discuss what happens when sodium chloride is dissolved in water. The reason I thought it was important to separate it out was because it was present right after the introduction of what an acid base and a salt is. And I didn't want this to be right after that. So I instead put it right before. Um, so it's going to be a really short video. So first of all, uh, in your textbooks, they've introduced a new concept called the dielectric constant. So a dielectric constant, it helps us understand if a particular substance will get dissolved in a particular solvent. So dielectric solvent, sorry, constant. So a dielectric constant is given to a solvent, okay? So this dielectric constant will help predict if a particular substance is going to get dissolved in that solvent. So the solvent can be water, can be benzene, um, off the top of my head, the oh, it can be hexane, um, it can be any solvent that exists, basically each of these solvents will have their own dielectric constant. and in like the lab scale it actually helps to know the dielectric constant that in turn helps us you know figure out if a particular um substance can dissolve in the solvent and for chemical reactions to take place we do prefer for a substance to get dissolved in the particular solvent that we're using so dielectric constant higher is the dielectric constant more is the bond strength so you have h2o right so between the two molecules of water, there will be some amount of bond strength between these molecules. And more is the dielectric constant, stronger is this strength, I mean, <laughs> stronger is this bond between the two water molecules. So when sodium chloride is in the solid state, it exists as an ionic cluster, right? It does not conduct electricity, we've discussed that <coughs> in the previous video. So when you have NaCl, the forces that hold the sodium and chlorine together is an electrostatic force because it's an ionic bond. So this force is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant. I hope this made sense. So dielectric constant. So this force, electrostatic force, is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant, which basically means that for the electrostatic force to break, the dielectric constant has to be really high in comparison. Now, when we have water, okay, now we are taking the sodium chloride, adding it to water. What this will do is it will come and affect the electrostatic force between the sodium and chlorine. Okay, and this will lead to the split of the sodium chlorine, so <laughs> sodium chloride to lead to the formation of sodium Na plus and Cl minus ions. Okay, now for uh, the so the dielectric constant for water is 80. Okay, uh, and when you add sodium chloride to water, the electrostatic force will decrease by a factor of 80 because electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant. That is a very fancy way of saying higher is the dielectric constant. Like if the dielectric constant is high, then the electrostatic is going to get affected by the same amount, that is 80, right? So basically what's happening over here is sodium chloride is getting dissolved to lead to the formation of sodium and chlorine ions. The sodium, essentially in the end what's happening is the sodium and the chlorine is getting split because of the hydration with the water molecule. And I, yeah, so that's it. So a dielectric constant we learned from this video is that it helps us predict if a particular substance can dissolve in a solvent. Higher is the dielectric constant, more is the strength between the two 
molecules of that solvent. So in case of sodium chloride, you have an electrostatic force holding the sodium and chlorine together because it's an ionic cluster. Now, the electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant. All we're saying is that the dielectric constant for water is 80. So when it gets, when sodium chloride gets added to water, the there is a decrease the electrostatic force decreases by a factor of 80 because of the inversely proportional situation and leads to the formation of sodium and chloride ions. Okay, in the end, what I am trying to say is that the water molecule bond is strong enough for them to push the sodium and chloride apart to lead to the formation of Na plus and Cl minus. That is all in simple terms. We just introduced a new concept called dielectric constant. It's way more complex, but this is like a basic idea of what I wanted to give you. In the next video, we are going to be talking about acids, bases and salts.